there are fears more cases of bird flu in coming in the weeks after the virus was discovered on a farm in Sydney's northwest. Let's go to Jack Hahn now, who's at Freeman's Reach for us. Jack, good morning. An exclusion zone has now been set up where you are. Yeah, that's right, Brooke. Good morning to you. A biosecurity lockdown in effect this morning. The farm itself is in the foggy distance on your screen, about two kilometres down this road. So that exclusion zone is in place this morning. Only essential workers, people that need to be there, allowed in, and they are being disinfected on their way out to try and stop the spread. This bird flu detected here at a farm on Freeman's Reach. This is a suburb uh, down from North Richmond, in between North Richmond and Windsor, in fact. But the strain that they found here is separate to the one that's been detected seven times in Victoria. Nonetheless, more than 50,000 chickens will need to be put down. It seems what's happening at the moment is we're getting these spillover events occurring from the wild birds uh, that are active at the moment and that's spilling over into domestic poultry. So we've seen these events in Victoria, uh, six or seven events. There's actually been two different viruses in Victoria and now there's this third virus mm. in New South Wales. So it's it's actually something we haven't seen before. So, look, the big question this morning, what does this mean for egg supplies at supermarkets? We know that Coles has limits here in Sydney, New South Wales. In fact, every state, with the exception of WA, Woolies and uh, Audi have not yet moved on putting limits in. Industry experts say that this outbreak isn't likely to knock down stocks just yet. And, in fact, they are calling for calm. They don't want to see people flying down to the supermarket and panic buying eggs, Brooke. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, John. The New South Wales egg farm is in quarantine this morning following an outbreak of bird flu. For more, we're joined by bird flu expert Professor Michael Ward. Professor, thanks for your time this morning. So we're talking about a different strain here, aren't we, to the one that's been detected in Victoria? Oh, that's right, yes. From what we understand, it is a different strain. So it's called H7N8. In Victoria, it's been H7N3. So they're, they're different viruses. How does that happen? I mean, why are they different? And how is it that a different strain has suddenly appeared somewhere else entirely? Yeah, it's interesting. So avian influenza viruses, there's a large number of viruses, um, hundreds and hundreds of different types of viruses. So in, in this case, these viruses really are maintained in wild birds. So that's what their natural home. So they, they're a wild bird type virus. And it seems what's happening at the moment is we're getting these spillover events occurring from the wild birds uh, that are active at the moment, and that's spilling over into domestic poultry. So we've seen these events in Victoria, uh, six or seven events. There's actually been two different viruses in Victoria, and now there's this third virus mm. in New South Wales. So it's, it's actually something we haven't seen before, this many different viruses hitting this many farms. And, and there must be logistical um, problems with all that. I mean, how do you prevent it from happening with a wild mm. bird, for example? Mm. Um, and how does it not spread to, to other farms? Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Um, it's very difficult with wild birds. So the main uh, prevention is by security. So you try and separate your domestic poultry from your wild birds. One issue in the last few years, I guess, is the movement to free range. And that causes many challenges. You can imagine when poultry, when chickens are out, outside, um, contact with wild birds is very difficult to manage. Mm. Um, in terms of control, uh, the authorities very quickly clamp down on these infected properties. So, for example, this one recently um, in New South Wales, there will be quarantine, all the chickens um, on that farm will be destroyed, mm. uh, farms in the neighbourhood, there'll be restrictions on movement and really, you know, heavy clamping down on that whole area until the, the virus is eradicated. Yeah, it's awful, isn't it? I mean, is there a risk to consumers? We don't think there's a risk to consumers with our modern sort of processing, um, cooking eggs and chicken meat. Uh, there's very, very low risk um, of transmission. Really, transmission we've seen is only between people who work with poultry and also in, in situations where poultry are being um, prepared um, in sort of those those sort of situations where there's sort of you know villages and, and marketplaces. So so for most of us in this situation, no, there's there's no risk. The, the problem for, is, um, as you outlined so eloquently at the start of the interview, um, you've got wild birds who are bringing this in. So so this farm has to go through the catastrophic destroying um, mm. of all its stock. It has to restock. And then you don't know if, if the, this virus is going to get in again mm. or the bird flu is going to get in again. So how do, you, how do you prevent it from happening? 
Exactly. It's a real challenge to the industry and particularly this driver with free range. Um, mm. The industry is actually in a bit of a hard place because for animal welfare, everyone likes free range, but it does introduce that risk. And just reminds us, you know, this is a, a virus that lives in nature that's in our, our, our wildlife. Sei sotto un cielo sbagliato